Hi, I'm Judith Hogue, and you're watching The Libby O Show. How did she do it? Do it. Hi, honey. Hi. We should tell the people where, what we're doing. Well, this is a Hi. party, isn't it? It is a party. I mean, come on. <laughs> Look, <laughs> this is what we do in the afternoons. Every day. We just eat candy and drink bubbly. Non-alcoholic so, Non-alcoholic, bubbly. but sometimes we, yes. we, sometimes we venture into like the real deal. No, so. we don't. No, we've had some good. You're a very good cocktail maker, but we've also had a fun... Um, night on the town not too long ago it, when we just hit a few bars together. You know what? I would love to look at the date on that photo because I'm pretty sure it was into the winter time, which it could was. very well be a year ago because, you know, time flies. I think it was a year ago. It's yeah. way too long ago. So we're I celebrating. I haven't been around for a year. <laughs> I've lost a year of my life. I swear to God. I love it. I have. I have. Well, everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of The Libby O Show. I'm Libby O, and we're celebrating Halloween with none other than my friend and actress, Judith Hogue. Hi, Libby. I'm so Thank glad you you're here. Thank you for inviting me to your amazing basement. A amazing basement, and uh, we've got all Filled the goods with here. with treats. All the tr no tricks, though. Mm. Well, we'll maybe, see. Maybe some It's early sleep. still. <laughs> <laughs> I Who almost knows? got some candy cigarettes. I should have done that. Oh, yes. I love a good <laughs> candy cigarette. <laughs> So good. Well, I'm so glad you're here. We're celebrating Halloween. We're celebrating yes, the launch we of yes. Libby non-alcoholic wine. What? And we're gonna get to talk about all of your incredible experiences. Yes. In film, on camera, and just in life. So I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. We've been trying to do this for a while. But we made it. I know, we finally did. Even even though I got a speeding ticket on the way to get here. Hey, he didn't know. <laughs> I he, was, he doesn't know I was who in he just gave. <laughs> You were going to help the Ninja Turtles. That I was speeding to get yeah. there. I wasn't going that fast. It's always when you're not going. <sighs> but I guess know. I was going faster than one should than in he that would have wanted particular you. area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we first have to talk about Halloween Town. Okay. Four okay. movies I obviously caught up this week, went back. Did you really? To, I did. Oh, I like that's very sweet. I don't know, and I, I, you know, at some point I do want to talk about you know nostalgia and what that means to you as an actress, mm -hmm. and you know you're always on the road at these these different comic cons, and I know what a weird meet. job I have now. Uh, but it's the, never it's in a so, million years, yeah, what I have thought I would have done that. I've yeah. seen Galaxy Con. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be the last job you do before you die as an actor. No, I I started doing comic cons. Yeah. Um, because a friend of mine who was on The Walking Dead said, you really, you need to do Comic-Cons. And I was like, oh, well, I actually went to him and said, I've been asked repeatedly, you do them all the time. And he, I said, but it, it's, it's, it seems like a terrible thing. And he was like, oh, God, you're such an idiot, Judith. You need to go do a Comic-Con. You, of all the people I know, will love doing this. And I went and did my first one, and I brought my mom Okay. And we had such a blast, and it was so fun. And now it's just turned into this side gig that is so much fun. Yeah. And and um, but I never in a million years would have thought that that would be something that I would be doing. And it's kooky. The you know just the way that fandom it just continue it just keeps going. You know. It's nuts. So what do you feel like has been like the consistent theme when you meet these people? Like what is it about looking back at your favorite movie? And reliving that. Like, what's so special about being on the other side and watching these people just get really excited about what well, you do? I think there's something about when you're, like, when you're a part of somebody's childhood. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you the number of people who will come and stand next, you know, come and say hello. Yeah. And say, oh, my God, you were my childhood. And I think about my own childhood. And the, it's like your childhood makes these indelible marks on your soul mm -hmm. that you carry with you, you know, hopefully for better than for worse, your whole life. And um, the thing that is astonishing 
is that the Halloween Town universe, instead of, because we're at, I think it's like 27 years. I mean, that sounds about Something right. like that. I think 1999. Mm-hmm. Is that right? 98, 99. 98, it was 98, 98 when I looked it up. Um, that... Uh, you know, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And you'd think by now, like it would start to dwindle and go away. And it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think that there's something about, because they're such sweet, charming movies, they really do hold up. Um, I think I haven't seen them in a while, but I know the first one does. And, um, and that people love them. And I don't know. I think there's something about the older you get, you want to slip into those moments that yeah. are happy childhood memories and you just gravitate towards that. And now with Comic Cons and stuff, I mean, it's nuts. Hearing people have stories. It's nuts. Oh, gosh. Know? I mean, stories that, you know, when you're living in Los Angeles, you're just kind of, you go, you do a project. It's fun, but it's like a closed little system there. You're working in a vacuum. You're yeah. with a film crew. You're with the cast. You're with, you know, in this environment, but then everybody scatters to the winds. And so you don't get the feedback that you do, like, when you're doing a play. Like, you immediately get the feedback from the audience. Mm-hmm. And so we had, like, no idea that this would be something that would catch fire and that people would love. And it's, it, so people will come up and they will tell us our, you know, their experiences. And it's just such a lovely thing because I feel like it's not really about me. It's about something that I was attached to. It's really about you and your experience. And I just kind of hold up the mirror and say, tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but There's also, like, the crazy stories that you hear, the really deeply personal, meaningful ones. There was one woman who came up recently, and she was an epileptic. She would have grand mal seizures. And she said that when she felt a seizure coming on, that she would go turn on Halloween Town, and it would calm her nervous system, and she wouldn't have a seizure. Or if she was out in public... And she had one, but when she got home and she was still, you know, shaky and that she would just watch the film and it would just calm. It's like it literally calmed her nervous system. What? See, and that's, that's why you did. own cleverness, not necessarily anything we did. But, <laughs> but I mean, you hear crazy stories of uh, that are, you know, that that we don't get to hear because we're living in a vacuum when mm-hmm. we're doing you know, the project. So when you get a chance to go be out in the world and be with a bunch of people who really appreciate what you, you know, something that you've been a part of, it's lovely to hear these stories. Yeah. In person, in real time, you know? Yeah. Well, and also you go, oh, we made a tiny little dent in the universe. (laughs) How lovely is that? I mean, I was in Soweto, South Africa. Mm. And on the other side of the world, and I was in this restaurant, and it was an, an amazing restaurant. It was like, it was these long tables filled with hot pots, or filled with hot plates with pots on top. And there were no signs, there was no what's in here, you know, saying there's, a, and you just get a plate and you just start filling it up. I want to say that sounds incredible. It was incredible, and it's a, it's like, on my deathbed, I'll probably remember eating that food there. <laughs> but the weird, surreal moment was, I mean, here I am. I'm in Soweto, South Africa. And a little girl comes up to me and says, excuse me. Oh, were you the mother in Halloween Town? Stop. Oh, my Everyone gosh, that's so cute. It was, yeah, it was like even, on, uh, you know, on the other side of the world. They know the Disney who we, they Channel's know. there too. <laughs> it's an, it's inescapable. I feel like Disney Channel made a huge. I mean, I it's remember everywhere. every movie yeah. that I watched on Disney well, Channel. Well, we were kind of the first Disney Channel movie. Yeah, that hit, and yeah. that it kind of changed things because mm. that you know back in the day it was like there was a real line between people who did film and people who did television. And there was a real hierarchy about how film was better than television. Mm. 
and it's dumb and it's gone now, but it was a real thing. And then it was, well, if you're going to do television, doing children's television, like that, that was a whole thing too. And my agents were kind of rolling their eyes and not quite sure. But then we found out Debbie Reynolds was doing it. And it was like, well, I mean, I mean that I, takes it up a notch. Well, and also it was you know? an incredibly sweet script. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was like, if, if this is good enough for Debbie Reynolds, it's good enough for me. I'll give a, you know, let's see what this Disney Channel thing is. And then, you know. Yeah. Well, wh- okay. What was it like working with Debbie? It was amazing. I, I, as great as you might think she is, she is far greater than that or was far greater than that. She was incredibly generous and kind and funny. And she was like, when you first met her, she was kind of like a church lady, but then she turned like the potty mouth showed up like five minutes later. And she had, I remember one time sitting with her and she was telling me stories and she was telling me stories about working with um, Betty Davis. And, um, and I was just like, you were like, I'll just tell me everything. I was. And, and she was like, it's refreshing. Mm-hmm. And I said, what? And she said, because a lot of times I find that I work with younger people and they not only do they not know who I am, which she didn't really care whether or not you knew who she was, but she was like, they don't care about the history of film and they don't really care about... There's no curiosity there. There was no curiosity. And I was like, oh, honey. I have it. I Let's just have slumber <laughs> parties. And just, you can regale me all night long. And she just had, I mean, she went through what it was like to do singing in the rain, what it was like starting in Hollywood, Mm -hmm. what it, you know, and there was always a million Carrie Fisher stories. And she was generous and she was kind. And she was, I, she was just a, a, a tough old broad in the best sense of the word. She wasn't, you know, you would think with her story, I mean, Liz Taylor and I mean, gosh, I mean, she's Hollywood royalty and she was not cynical, not really. And she, although she got the joke, but she was just, she was the last group of young actors actresses who went through the Hollywood system. Mm. Like there was a Hollywood star system. And after those years, it was over and they didn't, because they would give you singing lessons and dancing right. lessons and a- elocution and etiquette and all of these like resources, all of these things, give you a new name and all of that. <laughs> and she was the end of it. Mm. She was the end of it. I remember seeing somewhere where you said that when she walked in the room, she said something about being like Princess Leia. Oh, it was like, so funny. That was, was really day. funny. Yeah, it was our first day of shooting, and we're in the kitchen, and she sweeps into the room because she's Debbie Reynolds, and yeah. she's bigger than life. And and she said, hello, everybody. I'm Princess Leia's mother. <laughs> and I was like, Princess Leia's mother? You're Debbie Reynolds. I mean, it she, but she's that kind of, she had no airs about her. Like we were, we were rehearsing in her trailer. This was like one of the very first days. She and I are in her trailer. We're going over lines. I, she's like, go on in. I'll be right in. Oh. And I'm just sitting in there waiting for her. And she sweeps in and says, well, my hotel and casino is on the auction block <laughs> right now. And it was like, wow, are you, do you need a minute? Like, do you need a second? To are you going to be okay? Yeah. And she was like, ah, my life is just a series of one fascinating disaster after another. Let's rehearse. And I was like. And that's her character, though, in Halloween Town, which is so f- and great. And she, she embodies that. I mean, she is just, she's creative in ways. I just loved watching her. Yeah. I learned so much. I, I loved her. We all loved her. Everybody has great Debbie stories. And in the beginning, her character says, you know, movies teach us about life. Yeah. So for you, what is a movie that you, you know, grew up loving or maybe one that you that you starred in that you felt like has taught you about life? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, um, gosh, there's so many movies mm-hmm. I think that have taught me about life. 
uh, I mean, uh, my first favorite movie, the movie that will always be my childhood movie, is The Wizard of Oz. Yes. And the only way you could see The Wizard of Oz is when it came on TV, maybe once a year. This was back, so I am 61 years old, and when I was growing up, and I spent a lot of time in rec rooms like this yeah. one, um, we had like four stations. There were like four channels. Yeah. And if you were lucky, like maybe during the summer, the Wizard of Oz would come on. Yeah. And it was thrilling. It was thrilling. So that movie, and there's so much in that movie that's just... There's a, you know, click your heels. It's beautiful. And you just say there's no place like home and you'll be home. And it's like, well, why did I, well, why didn't you tell me? Because you wouldn't have believed me. And, you know, I mean, those are really stories. Like nobody can tell you as you're growing up how to be. You have to learn it yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I think for movies, learning about life, I think for me doing Ninja Turtles was yeah. a movie that, taught me about the Hollywood like school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. But it's it was but it was such a great thing. And it's, you know, I'm so blessed and lucky that I got to be part of that world because that's a whole nother, you know, wonderful, fun world that has a huge fan base. Yeah. 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 And Wizard of Oz was my sister's favorite movie was growing it? up. Yeah. I can still probably I could probably sit with the movie and recite most of it. Yeah, and click your heels maybe Yeah, in the process. Oh, yes. I, I just wanted a dress like Glinda. And then I had my neighbor was um, in Los Angeles. He was the great one of the greatest neighbors you'll ever have, a uh, guy named Ned Price. Mm -hmm. And he was the VP of Film Archives and Restoration at Warner Brothers. And so he did the um, restoration for The Wizard of Oz. When I think it was the 75th, no, uh, could it have been the 50th? It was, it was years ago and he gave us all these like, okay, so you have to watch the film because it started with one director and then there was a second one and Dorothy's hair yeah. gets long and short. So the next time you watch it, her hair is up here okay. and then it's down here and then it's up here and it's down here. Um, You'll see as they're going through the forest, if you look closely, you'll see the bodies of the people in the trees. You'll see like a little leg sticking out or something. He he was like, he destroyed the movie for me, but it was really fun. <sighs> to it kind of pick really out fun. those little things. The, all the moments. Yeah, there were a million of them. When it comes mm -hmm. to like Halloween Town and like the different costumes and the, you know, the special effects, was there a particular like costume that you really liked from the people in Halloween Town or like a special effect that you watched kind um, of? Well, gosh, we had a great special effects. Yeah. And Alfred Soul was the production designer. Yeah. And he created this world that was so amazing. We were lucky because we shot in St. Helens, Oregon, and it was this really picturesque little town. Like it was a real town square with a real city hall with the clock and the whole thing. And um, it was just, his imagination was so wonderful. And he created this world that it was so easy to slip into. And, um, and it was, it, yeah, I mean, his special effects were incredible. Um, there were two things that really stand out to me. The first one was my um, one of the, my hardest days on Halloween Town was my very first day of work. Okay, and my character had been described as kind of a Martha Stewart. And so when I thought of Martha Stewart, Martha Stewart was like, like perfectionist. perfectionist. She gets, does everything the right way. Kind of perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And so when I went in for my costume fitting, it was like, these were not Martha Stewart clothes. These were weird, ill-fitting clothes. And so, but it was what they chose. Wanted. And so, you know, you're going along with it. And um, and then when I got there the first day, um, I'm trying on my wardrobe and nothing fits. Like they took it in for somebody else. But it, I was like struggling to, some yeah. things were too big, some things were too little. And then they did this weird kind of hairstyle on me. And 
I, I was like, what has happened? Mm -hmm. I have these weird clothes. I have this weird hair. I went <laughs> and thought, you know, I'll go talk to the director. And he took one look at me and said, whoa, what happened? And I said, I know. Um, somebody helped somebody did this. this. <laughs> somebody did this. I was one of the producers who kind of stood and oversaw mm -hmm. what was going to happen hair-wise. And it was kind of wonky because she didn't want anything to ever be in my face. So it all had to be shellacked back. And and I remember going back to my trailer and going, I really feel embarrassed. Like, this is the first time ever. I don't think I want to step foot out of my trailer. And it was like, oh, oh, no, 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 we can't have any of that. <laughs> and I said, okay, I gave myself a little acting class in my trailer. And it was like, all right. You're here to tell a story. This is not about you personally, Judith, and how you think you should look. This is how you look. Now we have to make it so that it's real and that this is who you are. So let's go back to the story, which for me was always the treasure map. Everything you needed was in this beautiful script, this okay. story that you could ever possibly want. And I said, okay, so the hair is kind of weird and the clothes don't really fit. You are a witch who's pretending to be a mortal. And you're not doing a very good job of it, actually. So, no, nothing fits because you're not being your true self. You are pretending to be somebody that you are not. Mm. So would it make sense that your hair's a little weird? Would it make sense that your clothes don't fit? You are lying about who you are. You're, you're masquerading as a human and you are a witch. And you've you lied to your children. <laughs> and that was kind of the other thing, because I've had so many people say, God, you were so mean. And then they come, and then they'll say, until I grew up, and then I realized you were just trying to be a good mom. But there was a piece in the script where they wrote that my character was really mean, but there was no explanation about why. Okay, exactly why. So my job is to answer all the questions that they haven't answered for me so that I know what I'm doing. And I decided early on, I have children that are half wit, they're half human, we've all seen E.T. What happens if people were to find out that my children were half human, half wit? They'd probably take them, they'd probably want to do yeah. experiments on them, and then that just opens up everything to Halloween Town, mm -hmm. and everybody there could, you know, they're next. And so it was out of love, and it was out of concern. <laughs> For my family. And, and, you know, these are the things you do when you're sitting in your trailer and you're trying to figure out, like, the, the, the way to, to attack a new part. Yeah. How to, especially if there's little holes, because there's always holes. And to kind of be okay with whatever uncertainty is there and yeah. being able to be like, okay, this is what I'm working Embrace with. Embrace the uncertainty. How can I be friends with it for yeah. this time being? Not forever, yeah. but maybe just yeah. in Halloween Town. Yeah. No, it was great because it it oh, it answered a million questions. Yeah. It's and that part was really fun. It was like, "Oh, I'm so glad I had crazy hair and bad wardrobe." Mm -hmm. And then as the the films went on, as my character evolved, like all of that changed and it was just this really beautiful arc that I mean, it was only supposed to be one movie. There was not supposed to be a bunch of movies. Or a return to, yeah. No. Yeah. It was, and then I thought, oh, it's a sequel. And then it was like, it's a trilogy. Oh, four. It's a four franchise. What? And then. Katrina, are you loving us? I'm like the happy with Clay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done any work today. <laughs> We've just been having a good time. With and yet you have. You've I mean, made. I put that one together first. <laughs> I know. And took pictures of her. We, we took, I was like, might as well. I know, because you look so good. Thank you. You look well, so good. I got some photos. The photos that I have in the theme song I had a couple years ago, and I feel like those are la like, those I can keep for a long time. They'll have changed right. it. But They're I still haven't gotten any. No, and this is so good. You need it in this dress, too. Yeah. And the other dress is fabulous. We did, we did both. both. Oh, you did? Oh, perfect. We went and straight yes, for so it. Perfect. <laughs> Just having a fun time. You know, the world's crumbling, but we're, you know. We're good. Eating candy. <laughs> we're good. Let's get to a fan question. Okay. Taylor wants to know. Yeah. If you could only choose one of the magic spells from one of the Halloween Town movies to oh. use in real life, which one would it be and why? 
Taylor, I love you. I love you, Taylor. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to come clean. Um, I don't remember any of the spells. I was a reluctant spellcaster because they were very, they were in Welsh and they um, were complicated. Mm. And I let the kids do the heavy lifting on that one. And I just kind of mumbled and pretended like I learned only the essentials. I would say of all the spells, you know, it would always be the one that either, you know, lights the pumpkin or opens a portal. Probably the one that, did we close a portal from Halloween Town or I open th- a I've, portal? I think we kind of did. We kind of you kind of did a little them, bit of both. We kind of closed them. We kind of yeah. you were back and forth. Y'all were trying we to figure were back it out. And forth. You know. Um, I also uh, uh, enjoyed when I got to turn my my bow back into frogs. That was kind of yeah. Fun. Let's talk about who you may keep in touch with from Halloween uh, Town. Uh, um, I see everybody at, you know, out on the road, but the person that I'm closest to is Kimberly, Kimberly J. Brown and her new husband, Daniel Koontz. I don't know if you follow them on Instagram, TikTok. They're hilarious. They are made for each other. And it was funny when she first started dating him, she said, so (laughs) I'm dating somebody. That you know. Or she, no, I think she said, I'm dating somebody new. And I said, oh. And she said, and you know him. And I said, oh, who? And she said, Cal. <laughs> and I was like, Cal, who? who? She said, young Cal. I was like, young Cal? What are we talking about? <laughs> What's the age difference? <laughs> and, and she said, young Calabar. And I said, Daniel Coots? And she said, yeah, they had started, she'd called him up to do a little improv and apparently it went well and they just got married oh. and yeah, they got married in April in LA and we flew in and it was just such a sweet wedding. Such I a love sweet it. Wedding. Marnie's mom is, is proud of her decision. Yes. Oh, I am. I am very much. And, um, and I love her family cause I've known her family since she was what? She was 13 years old and now she's more older than that. I love it. That, na- that age Congrats. will remain nameless. We brought the candy nameless. corn for you. Yes, Kimberly, this is for you. Because you know how I feel about candy corn. <laughs> it's all for you. Yes. And you, Libby, because you oh. like it too. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's you know, it's not for everybody, but for some I love us. chocolate, but I could, I don't know, candy corn. Yeah. Kind of candy corn, and I used to like peeps. I'm not a peeps girl anymore. It's mm. too sweet for me. Yeah. It's too, yeah. Well, these I'm you're going to love a little bit later because they're oh, very balanced. Yes. 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 Uh, but before we get to that, I want to talk more about um, just some of the other actors that you've, you know, come in contact with. So I remember watching this. Um, I remember watching you tell a story about Robin Williams Aww. and how he turned out to be a Ninja Turtles fan. Fan. Yeah. And he showed up at the premiere. Yeah. And, like, that's, that's yeah. really, really sweet. He gave me my street cred on Ninja Turtles mm-hmm. because I had never heard of it before. It was a sweet script. I was very excited to do it mm-hmm. because it was going to be my first starring role in a film. But oh, it was hard to say it out loud a little bit, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I didn't realize it was a comic book. I did not know it was a cartoon. We were shooting a film in um, uh, New York called Cadillac Man. Yep. And I had to keep leaving on Friday as early as possible because I had to run. You know, they'd take me right to the airport. I'd hop on a plane. I'd go to Wilmington, North Carolina. We do a little pre-production, maybe a little tiny bit of shooting. Hop back on a plane. Sunday night, boom, I've got to be back in New York to shoot Monday morning. And he was like, where are you running off to? Yeah. And I said, oh, I'm doing another film. He was like, well, well done. Very nice. And, and he was such a, Robin is very much like Debbie, generous, kind, amazing. Learned so much from yeah. him. Learned so much from him. And um, he said, well, what's it called? And I was like, oh, oh I have to tell you. to ask. <laughs> and I said, it's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And he was like, what? And I said, it's, it's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it is a very sweet script. And he looked at me and he said, they're making a movie of that? 
And I said, yeah. And he said, I have the comic books. Yeah. And I was like, you what? And it, he said, are you playing April? And I he, said, he yeah. already knew. He knew. That's I was so like, cool. And I said, yeah. And he worked to help me get out on Fridays early. And then they shot me out. And then I went and did Ninja Turtles. And then when our film premiered at Universal, in he walks with Marsha and the kids. Oh. And it was pretty, I mean, he, he was just generous and kind. And he taught me, a, uh, you know, a lot of times when an actor is on camera yeah. and you're off camera, um, you know, you're supposed to give the same quality of, of a performance to that other person. A lot of actors don't. Mm. They're kind of like, my stuff's done. Now I'm going to just kind of say the words. Robin... On the other hand, when he was off camera, he was 100 to 150%. He was still inventing stuff off camera. He was giving you so much to help your performance. And I learned that early on, like always be there for the other actor. Always give them everything that you got. Like never withhold anything. Mm. And and I just loved him so much. And it's a real shame that he's not with us. A real shame. Yeah. Such a, I mean, iconic yeah, a talent and good human. man, good man. Um, what has it been like for you to really experience these types of blessings of people in Hollywood? Because nice. you know, yeah, Hollywood. You get the other side of it. It's just that. I yeah. Never <laughs> promise to love you back. <laughs> um, it's it's a nice thing. Um, you know, it's a really people always ask me. It's like, oh, I want to be an actor. Yeah, like should I be an actor? And my it's the same thing I say to people who are like, I'm thinking about having kids. Should I have kids? It's right. like, only if you will die regretting your decision not to have done it. So I always say that being an actor is, you have to want to do it so bad that you're willing to go through what it takes to be successful. Mm-hmm. And what it takes to be successful is going to mess you up a little bit, meaning that you're going to get your heart broken. You're going to get fired at some point. Things are going to go sideways. Things that you really, really want that you said, this is mine. I know it's mine. I was made for this. You're not going to get it. Um, Stuff that you really, really wanted, you're going to get. And it's maybe not going to happen. No, or maybe you got it and you're like, be careful what you ask for. Um, it's a mixed bag, probably like any other profession, but it is challenging. And you have to be up for the challenge. You have to be willing to like get back up and go at it again over and over and over and reinvent yourself and stay with it. And to have projects and things that years later, decades later, literally yeah. later are still loved and that there are these fan bases. And I really give it to the comic con boom that's happened that people are just so excited to go back and relive those memories. And to have that has just been a yeah. blessing. And I've gotten to meet, I've gotten to travel the world. I've gotten to meet the most amazing people. Yeah. I've made lifelong friends and a lot of them, too, are not necessarily the stars of the projects. It could be the makeup artist. It could be the hairstylist. It could be the construction coordinator. It could be the PA. I love who, working with crew. Uh, that's yeah, like, the crew is, for me, it's yeah. like if the crew loves you, you're doing something right. You're, you're doing something right. Yeah. Because that means you're just everybody with everybody. Because there's really a hierarchy of importance in Hollywood yeah. and where you fit on that rung. And I, that's the thing I've hated, hated about it from the get-go because it just doesn't feel right to me. Mm. It doesn't feel fair. It doesn't feel like as an artist that my contribution as an actor is any more important than the contribution of the costume designer or the the grip yeah. or the you know anybody else the drivers yeah 
It's it, such a team oh, effort. It's, it's such a team effort, and it's so siloed in terms of who's important and who's not important. And I just don't like to play that game. It's just too taxing. It's And it's not right. And it's so. Not. Yeah. And it's yeah. way more fun and you end up it's with. It's way more with, fun if everybody's invited. If everyone's invited, if everyone enjoys the environment. I mean, yes. like this. Yes. Is an you know A4 crew. You know who I really, I learned that from Debbie. Yeah. Really a lot. And then, so right before I did, um, uh, Ninja Turtles, I was doing Cadillac Man. Fran Drescher was in Cadillac Man, and we became friends. And I did the nanny. And one of the things that Fran always said, it was so much fun to do that show, and it was always so much fun to just be with Fran. But she always said, I feel like my show, I'm the hostess, and I'm throwing a party, mm-hmm. and I want every single person who's at this party to feel like they're wanted to be here and, and included and appreciated. And that's not always the case. Sometimes you'll walk into situations and you're like, what? Who? this is chilly. This is not the energy we <laughs> wanted. Is, no. Yeah. And very, very well-known, famous people. It doesn't happen a lot. But when it does, it's like, ooh. You can tell, it especially if you've you been in a good situation. Well, it doesn't you know, have to be that way, is yeah. the thing. It never has to be that way. It's a choice that people make, and they make it for whatever reason, you know, whatever trauma they're carrying or whatever whatever they're doing. But um, it's definitely way more fun when every single person is invited to participate and have fun mm-hmm. and is valuable, yeah. known to be valuable because they actually are. They you couldn't do it legitimately them. are. You yeah. Try to do a movie without lighting. Try to do it without sound. Try to do a YouTube show without the right setup. Hello. It doesn't, it just it will, doesn't work. No. So. <laughs> and, it, and it takes a village. Yeah. So, yeah. What was it like working with the cast of Armageddon? Oh. <gasps> I loved so that movie fun. so much. That was a crazy movie. Yeah. That was a movie that I went and I read for, and then I was told that I was in the mix. So being in the mix means that there's a very small pool of actresses that they are considering for the part. You're in the mix. And Michael Bay will make up his decision when he, make up his mind when he wants to. Well, a month passed. And so, uh, and also, this was, there were no scripts. You only got sides, and sides are just your portion of the script. Mm -hmm that has your bit of dialogue on it or the scenes and that's it. And so I got a call at like two o'clock in the afternoon on let's call it Tuesday that I got the part Okay. and I was going to shoot in the morning and I had a, was going to have a fitting that night at like six thirty or seven o'clock. And I said, well, will they have a script for me? And they said, oh, yeah, no, there'll, there'll be a script for you. And I went to my fitting, and there was no script. Mm. And there was no script anywhere. There was, there were no, there was no script with my name on it. <laughs> and There's nothing. I had to shoot in the morning. I had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to take a shower and to be on the road by 4.30 because I needed to be in Long Beach by 5.30, and I wanted to make sure I wasn't late. Right. Somewhere between 5 and 5.30. So... And I had no script. Okay, let me just give you some context. This is the most expensive movie ever made in Hollywood history at that point. Big cast, the whole world is in it. It's a movie about the end of the world. I'm not even quite sure who I am or what I'm doing or what my lines are. And I get to set and... It's actually There's, Armageddon. It's, it's kind Armageddon. of the end it's of like Armageddon. <laughs> and I get to set, and there's fortunately there's a script on my makeup um, um, in my trailer. Okay. And so I take it into hair and makeup, but you can't really read it because you have to have your face up because they're doing your hair and your makeup, and you can't be reading you and you, you know, you're just trying to get the right. lay of the land and stuff. And Will Patton, who played my husband. It was his first day too. And he had a very similar experience. And we just looked at each other like, and I went in for rehearsal and there was some tension going on in the set. And I kind of caught the brunt of it. It wasn't from Michael. It was really more from the crew. Michael and I got along great, 
But there, there was some fight happening that day, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I somehow inadvertently landed in the middle of it. Not that I did anything, but I was just getting little grenades lobbed at me. Yeah. And so I went back to my trailer completely shaken, still hadn't read the script, sort of had my lines down, and I thought, I don't know if I can do this. Like, this is really, really hard. And I thought, you could tank, and you could tell the story of you tanking, and everybody would go, wow, that sounds really rough. Wow. I, I, given so the same sorry. situation, I probably would have you know, yeah. face-planted too. Or here's your treasure map. You've got this script. Mm-hmm. Just tell yourself the story. Just you've got to make this true. And you had to make the end of the world true in like 25 minutes. And We could, sure, we could totally do that today. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And so it... I just said, okay, okay so just tell me. I, I would sit in my trailer, as I yeah. often do, and give myself a class and say, it's the end of the world. Mm-hmm. You're never going to, your son is never going to, you're never going to see him grow into a man. You're never going to see him graduate from high school. You're, oh, you'll never see your parents again. You'll never be kissed again. You'll never fall in love again. You know, just started doing all the things. That's my dog. <laughs> my sweet boy. It was my phone. We don't care. Do we don't care. That? No. No, it's not. He knows this it's the end really of the world. Love. It's the end of the world. It's the end of the world and happening. Come on. Oh, and it could be DoorDash. It could be DoorDash. It's been so good. <laughs> but, so good. So I would just started talking story to myself and made it real and then went and I was only supposed to work for two days. They brought me back for the next three months. Wow. And then when we had our cast and crew screening, I wanted to go up to Jerry Bruckheimer and introduce myself. And I said, hi, I'm Judith Oak. And he said, I know who you are. And he said, I, I'm glad you came over because I really wanted to thank you for being in the movie. Oh. What? Wow. And he said, yeah, I mean, you brought a, a heart to it that we really need it, and I cry every time I see you, or every time I see that yeah. the one particular scene. And I was blown away because I just thought, if I can just get through this without looking like a complete idiot or dilettante or face no. plant or anything. And so it really was like... Or like what, the scene that sticks out to me... To, to doing doing your work as an actor. Doing your work. And uh, not being that, in your head. Not being in your head, not overthinking it. No. Um, Just telling a story. Because that's our job, is to make pretend and tell a story. Be yes. storytellers. Be storytellers. One yeah. scene that sticks out to me is the front porch scene where, you know, oh, you're yeah. like, it was a very, like, why are you back dress. I, I, yes. I loved it. Floral. Oh, that was, was another good. tough part of that first day. Really? Oh, my gosh. I come out of hair and makeup. This is the one thing that Michael did that kind of was okay. like, oh. Kill me now. I came out and they were like, and Michael happened to be standing there, the director, Michael Bay. And they said, here, she's ready. And he went, um, put her up a little more. Just glimmer up a little more. Which to a woman is like, <gasps> what? I look horrible. That's not the <laughs> oh thing. That's gosh. not what you say. <laughs> so I had to take all my paranoia about not being pretty enough. Yeah. And put that away it's so it's so when people say oh i want to be in the film business i'm like oh yeah it's so easy it was a beautiful i I loved what they did though you look great the backlighting was gorgeous and they it was i mean michael makes beautiful pictures and actually that is a movie they caught so much like people were did not appreciate that movie when it came out and it is it has stay in power man that mm-hmm. i love that movie that is one of the few movies that i'm in that if i'm in a hotel and that movie comes on i will you probably will watch, it. watch it plus there's so many good memories see you know i had lunch with steve buscemi every day every day and yeah i mean that there was just an incredible cast it was it was amazing yeah. I feel like we should celebrate that and Halloween with a glass of Libby wines, right? <gasps> should we do it? Yes, we should. All right. Yes, well, we should. We are celebrating the spirit of Halloween with a sneak peek taste 
Um, the brand new non-alcoholic bubbly wine from Libby Wines. It's 35 calories a glass. Yay. They have resealable tops. I know, we fresher, like that. Fresher, longer. Well, you know what I would do? Yeah. Is when the wine is gone, take off the label, use this for cold water in the fridge at, for dinner parties yeah. and stuff. Your first I mean, tip. Come on. Coming soon, drink Libby. This looks so good. Libby wine. And I think I have the one that I would most want okay. right near me. We should do it. We're going to do a little candy uh, and wine pairing. So <gasps> Candy and wine pairing. Should. Let's hope this doesn't. Mine's a little. All right, should we see? Can we see? Pop. Whoop. Oh, oh not bad. Yeah. Whoop. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if mine does the same. Oh, please. Yeah, same. Oh, hi. Woo! Mine really did it. <gasps> oh. Oh, that is yum. Oh. Hold on, maybe we need to really let the top off. Maybe we really need to let it. That's This is beautiful though, right? It really <laughs> is beautiful. It's it's a beautiful label, it's a beautiful bottle, and I think this is really, really clever. Um, do you mind passing me a cocktail napkin? I would love, oh, <laughs> yes ma'am. Why Thank what you, I have here. I think we could, fortunately there's two. All right, do we get to try? All right, we have not, neither of us have tried this. No, yeah. I'm excited. This is authentic. Yes. Reaction. And it looks really good. And Here. I, you know, I've been watching you yes. and the Libby wines, and I have yet to have wow. Libby wines. So I feel this good about this. I'm gonna do just a little bit because I'm gonna try them both. I know we wanna. Okay, so mine is the, the non-alcoholic sparkling rosé made in California. I wonder where in California. I'm gonna just clean, we're gonna start right. clean this up for like two smells seconds. Smells good. Smells, smells like, smells like wine. Smells like, okay, I'm gonna say this. Sometimes non-alcoholic wine doesn't smell that great. It's got something, it's, there's something. It's like a funny smell. It's got a funny, this smells amazing. This smells good. It's very floral. Okay. It's got a good taste. It's got it's strawberries. Is that what it is? Melon. I like it. I would totally drink this. Ooh. Like if you want to have a cocktail and have it be non, I would also. Yeah. I think you could add one to it. <laughs> you could a little bit of bergamot like a little, liqueur there you go. or a little um, contro. Yes, or what's the really beautiful tall bottle? Um, oh, a lot of times you add it to champagne. It's a beautiful, beautiful bottle. I know, Why can't about, I think of what I it can't is? Think of it. It'll come to me. It's, It'll happen. You'll be drinking it. In the memory banks. It's a beautiful, like, Art Nouveau bottle. Art Nouveau. Uh, it's going to kill me. It's going to kill this us. This is delicious. This is, I mean. I mean, genuinely. I like it. Yours has, yeah, let's see. We've got bright strawberry candy melon, light brioche. Light brioche. They put bread in it? They put yeah. bread. <laughs> I have, let's see, see. I don't have glasses on, so I can't read it. Crisp pear, sweet citrus, and delightful florals All right, in the so white I'm wine. I'm gonna try yours too. Yes. Um, wait, I'm gonna finish Let's, mine. Did we? Did we cheers log? already? No, we, oh, did. we didn't. Here I was drinking. The, <laughs> cheers, my dear friend Libby. You I'm so like, lucky to have met you. I we're so lucky to have met each other. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Truly. Hmm. This is good. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised because sometimes the foes. Are faux. They're faux. Or they they're, taste like, like kind of medicinal, you know? Yeah, and they don't quite nail it. They don't quite nail it. Yeah. But yeah. But this is pretty. That Coming really soon. Like the resealable top is actually my favorite part because having to always find a cork, something to keep it. Should like, we swap? I think we should swap. We're going to swap. Okay, now sparkling white. I got it. Hold, please. I, apparently, I'm the heavy drinker of <laughs> the non alcoholic wine. Okay. Which is good. No more speeding tickets on the way home. <laughs> Although, oh my gosh. This okay. is a generous pour for myself. That is a <laughs> <laughs> I, we deserve it today, honestly. They're both really good. I don't think. They're both really this, good. Oh, this man. is something that I think that, that my husband does not drink. I think he would like something like this. I have a dear friend who is. Um, pregnant. Yeah. And um, loves to have a little glass of wine. And this would do this for her, give her that feeling of I'm having a cocktail with everybody, but I'm clearly not having a cocktail. This is, I mean. This is really good. Almost kind of like Prosecco, mm -hmm. but flavored. 
Well, okay, so what this makes me think of is I, there was a show on HBO called Six Feet Under. Okay. And it was a series that was on, uh, it was about a family of undertakers. Okay. And Rachel Griffiths, who's an amazing right. actress, um, she kind of came to fame uh, with a movie called Muriel's Wedding with mm -hmm. Tony Collette. And she and I were shooting a scene um, and Kathy Bates was directing. Stop. And we were drinking a uh, non-alcoholic wine. It was just like, I don't know, ginger ale or something. It wasn't, we should have had It Libby wasn't, wine. we should have had Libby wines. But this was what was so crazy. We got drunk. We got so drunk. And it was so funny because Kathy at one point came up and said, I love what you girls are doing, but you have got to sober up a little bit. You're a little too drunk. And Rachel and I just looked at each other. It was like, oh, my God, I really feel drunk. Yeah. The power of make hey. pretend. The power so. of really letting yourself let go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I feel like this, was. you could, if you drank this, you would feel like, like I could see myself drinking a glass of this and going, oh, well, And feeling kind of enough. <laughs> <laughs> We've had enough non-alcoholic. <laughs> well, it's the bubbles, you it know? It's the bubbles. Bubbles are everything. Bubbles, mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I feel like we should. Did you want to try some do candy? A pairing? Okay, so what? What, what do now we have? Now we know that we're not. I am not doing the candy. She's not doing corn. the candy corn or the peeps. But um, what? What is joy? <laughs> Are we taking a drive? Oh, if oh. my daughter was here, sour pink lemonade strips. Yes. Oh, I think so. But then I also got, I don't know if it's like too much strawberry for the rosé, but I got the strawberry like Hershey Kisses and then like regular Hershey Kisses. So a strawberry Hershey Kiss? Yeah. It's like strawberry chocolate? What What's going on over there? I mean, there's a lot. Okay, so these are a little, they may not be the most beautiful um, thing <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> that is, it that is like actually bacon. very Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like... A piece of Hold of on. bacon or a Band-Aid. I don't mean... It doesn't taste bad, though. Now, in my defense, I haven't eaten all day. Me neither, but this doesn't really look... Okay, I hate to, like, out this brand. Bad. <laughs> it doesn't look like the front at all. Uncommon... What is it called? Uncommon candy. <laughs> it looks like bacon. It looks like been, pork rinds. Or pork rinds. <laughs> That's been rolled in sugar. I think we probably Hold shouldn't on. be doing commercials for that, but it's not bad. I'm really hungry, so okay. If you let, if you let it just the taste just sit because mm. it's sour and <laughs> sit. Okay, so, so I, maybe we maybe we don't go on a joyride. Maybe we maybe we don't want to joyride. That might be too much for us. Yeah. Okay, we need to discuss this. Okay. Okay. I have a problem with it. Yeah. Because I think it is. Okay. So, do you like white chocolate? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that white chocolate is lying to us. It's not chocolate. No. It's something else. It's a white candy thing. That is not chocolate. And when I, I'm thinking that this is white chocolate pretending to be strawberry. Hold, please. What is going on? It's so good, though, right? There's something oddly addicting about it. Well, it's got these little pink things inside. It's like, it's like Pop Rocks? It has Pop Rocks in it. Stop it. Stop it right now. I'm also, the thing. joyride, I let it, it actually, actually the joyride does pair well if you let it kind of. Lift. I don't hate it. I don't hate it either. I don't love it, love it. Are you talking about the little, the strawberry chocolate? Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's the kind of thing where one is plenty. One did the trick. But let me pair it now with my sparkling white. This is See, I don't have the packaging, so I don't even I know. I feel like the sparkling white is better without the strawberry kiss. Because mm. it's too sweet. And so it makes that taste more sour. And this has actually got a really, the perfect amount of sweet. Yeah. 
Would you like a cheese it? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we need a little salt. In. Here we go. Cheese its this is, this is an ode to Ninja, Tur- Ninja Turtles. This is some junk food. They're, oh, and they, they're all about. When I'm with the guys, yeah, um, they have to always go out for pizza. Mm-hmm. It's like a thing. It's turned into a whole thing with them. A whole thing? Yeah. We kind of travel in a pack. It's so much fun. Next year's our 25th anniversary. Stop. I know. Cheers to that. Thank you very much. I know. Who knew? Okay. Are you a Chicago pizza gal or a New York pizza? I'm a New York pizza gal. Yeah. Come on. You're like, why would you even ask? Why would you ask? <laughs> like, Chicago pizza? Is that? No. Chicago pizza is delicious, but it's a totally different kind of pizza. They're Completely. like two different worlds. I love a good thin crust. Me too. And then, have you ever eaten at Original Ray's? There's a million original rays in New York, but there was a really original, original ray. That was the first pizza that put, like, a mountain of cheese on it. It was so good. I I remember my first piece in New York. Yeah? Way back. You want to hear something real? I'm going to admit something embarrassing on camera right now. Go ahead. Now that we've been, now that we're drunk. Now that we're drunk on Libby wines. Non-alcoholic wine. So I, this is probably the scariest thing in this interview, maybe. I've never been to New York. Really? Yeah. Oh, you need to go. I know. You need to go. It's so close that I'm like, yes. I could just go anytime I want. But. but set your trip up right. Like, go. I have a friend who goes to New York every year, and she has certain things. Like, she's usually going because she there are certain new restaurants that she wants to try. Um, she always goes to Bemelman's Bar at the... Um, or the Agunquin room at the, um, oh, why can't I think of the name of the hotel? Very, very uh, well-known, famous, famous hotel. It'll, uh, the... Is it the is it the one that they do the all the movies? Yes. Um, oh, um, Eloise and the... Yes. Um, well, wow. no, 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 it's not Eloise. That's the Park Plaza Hotel, which is yeah. a great hotel, totally different hotel. This one is on the east side, and... It's, come on, it's it's not the Waldorf Astoria. It is the Carlisle, mm. the Carlisle Hotel. And um, and so she always makes sure that she, like, sees certain things. Like, she she always has to go to Chinatown and have a good meal there. And, yeah. Or there's always, you know, got to hit Rockefeller Center, depending on the time of year. Right. You know, what's going Christmas, on. Christmas, maybe. Yeah. But New York is a very... Um, special wonderful place i the last time i was there excuse me it is a sparkly wine after all <laughs> lots um, of bubbles uh i will you know i lived there i loved living there but i don't think i could live there anymore yeah i just i'm I, there's a lot of people there, you you know, keep walking because if you stop on that sidewalk, somebody's got to smack See, that's right a, into that's you. what I think I would like about it because I oh the energy's amazing. I'm such a you would then you I kind of do it. that here. I need well, more. I'm going get back. some more rosé. I'm going for the rosé. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna. We're gonna. I am going to compare Pete's okay. versus candy corn versus Kinder Bueno. Okay. And I feel like this, because it's a strawberry rosé, well, it's a sparkling rosé. Do you think I should do the white with the candy or the rosé with it? Well, I, uh, that's a tough one. I'm going to be doing a piece of chocolate with my, because it's like chocolate and strawberries. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, yeah. honestly, if you should dip it in your glass and do it like that. You're thinking, he's about to disappear. Just kind of, Yeah. Hey, you know, you know what? You know what's so great about Libby Wines is you can enjoy it without the booze, you know? I but know. The, the little guy. <laughs> Sorry. I had to be. That's why they pay her the He's going swimming. Bucks. Look at that. And there <laughs> goes his head. I bet it's going to make this, like, really, like, marshmallow. It's probably. Is it good? My mom loved peeps. Oh, my mm. gosh. Still. Was that the way to do it? I think Dunking I should. It he, in. He'll just—he's gonna have to disappear. So there you go. I want to see if he just like into the sauce. <laughs> Katrina's like, this isn't actually very pretty to look at. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm well, just gonna when eat they're it. on their second glass of non-alcoholic wine, you, you know, know, everything, all decorum goes out the window. Mm-hmm. Isn't it amazing? Don't you feel a little like you've had a glass of wine? I feel like I've had a glass it's of wine. It's the weirdest thing. It's like 
Just suggestion. And then you kind of think, are we really drunk? Honey, give me another. Let me wait till you get to the end of this glass. And we'll keep going. It's good with chocolate. Although, Mm. I will say this. I've become such a chocolate snob. Okay. I want, after you Belgium, have Be- French chocolate, Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. It now is different. Now it's like, if I'm going to eat it, honestly, because I don't eat a lot of sugar, I try not to eat a lot of sugar. Here we are, though. I know. I look like, <laughs> my pile of, <laughs> I look like that kid that eats their, like, Easter candy or their Halloween candy, like, the same night they went trick-or-treating. Who doesn't? Who does it? Well, I, I think the only ones who don't and are the one ones sitting. whose parents take the, their bags away from them. Yeah. Oh, we got to not. You got to no. let the kids live once. So were you um, the kid who um, trick-or-treated with a pillowcase or a pumpkin? Mm. Or a bag? Pumpkin. The plastic pumpkin, like, buckets that they sell. Okay, I had a very big so nostalgia small. moment last year when McDonald's came back with the Happy Meals, the Halloween Happy Meals that came in little different, like there was a ghost, a pumpkin. Oh. Like that was a huge thing and they brought them back and I, of course, as a 32-year-old woman, get, right, had right. to go get. That's so sweet. And it was so fun. So for us growing up, yeah. we were pillowcase because okay. those pumpkins are not going to fit nearly no. enough candy. You're going to have to keep going back home, dumping them out and coming back. And we were there we were on a mission. My kids used to have a thing in LA where they would come home and weigh their candy bags. And the competition was whose bag weighed the most. Oh, that's smart though. And then the way that I did it with them was that first night, eat till you're sick, you just go ahead. And then I did take the candy. Yeah. And I was pretty generous with it, but I kind of, my kids were like puppies. You know, a puppy, if you put a yeah. ham on the ground, they'll eat the whole ham. Yeah, they're ready. And then they'll be sick. Mm-hmm. My kids would have done that with their food. I mean, with their candy, for sure. For sure. What was They your... would have been up all night eating candy. What was, like, their favorite outfit or your favorite outfit as a kid that you... Favorite costume that you remember? Oh, gosh. Uh... <laughs> well, my favorite costume was just something I wore to school one day. <laughs> Um, so my mom, who's just come to live with me, it's so sweet. I love her. She's 85. She's What's adorable. her name? Joan. 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 Oh, she's strong. That's a very strong. Uh, and she's yeah. hilarious. And she was telling me about that day that I went to school. It was kindergarten. I had on a white lace, puffy cotton shirt with a bow, a, a red plaid jumper, White I can see it. Lace stockings. And then my aunt had given me this wild rhinestone belt that I just looped around me several times, made of rhinestones. I still have it. Badass. It's an amazing thing. And I had the whole thing on and I was getting ready to head out the <laughs> door. <laughs> my mom was like, Whoa, hold up. And she made me take the belt off. Oh. I know. I, we talked about this. This is a Marnie like, and uh, Mom. Halloween yeah, moment. I know. And she was like, I just, and we're talking, this was like the mid-60s. Yeah. Well, probably late 60s. And she just was like, I just wasn't going to let you walk out the door like that. She said, all you needed was light bulbs. You need a oh, bang. Yeah. And so I think that was one of my favorite. But costumes, you know, every costume... For the most part, was homemade. Yeah. Because they didn't have costumes like we have. Halloween was not. It's not I mean, at the level it now. All, yeah, it's a whole, it's a thing. I, I think making your own costume, though, there's something really I fun still about that. I made my kids' costumes. I mean, we definitely did our store bought, but I had a huge box, like a big box, yeah. filled with costumes and dress up and a lot of times they were happy just going in there, and we put stuff together all yeah, the time. All the time. Do you still have the yellow coat from Ninja Turtles? Yeah. No, oh. I don't. But next year, um, so I have been very I should give it to you. Fortunate. Oh Lord knows it's. I'm it's sure stuck somewhere. It's, it's somewhere. It's probably dissolved somewhere. <laughs> it's in a goodwill. But probably. <laughs> 
Um, next year, so I've been very fortunate. NECA Toys has made three different action figures in my likeness. I know. Oh, how it's, cool. it's like it's a very cool thing because when the film came out, there were action figures, but it didn't look like me. Yeah. And I was like, what? And they sent them to me. I was like, oh, a figure of me. I don't know why I thought it would look like me. Right. But it totally didn't. And I was a little disappointed. And then in 2020, NECA reached out and said, we'd love to do an April O'Neill action figure. And they had a, a fine artist who was a sculptor sculpt my face, sculpt the body, do the whole thing. And and I actually did something on Instagram with NECA and took everybody through the process of that. But anyway, uh, they're doing a fourth, and I think this will be the final one for this particular series. Um, and um, it's April in the yellow jumpsuit. So it's going to be my face oh, in a yellow jumpsuit. Oh, cute. And I think we're going to make a yellow jumpsuit. I'm not sure. There's got to get on that. There's a couple people who are actually saying, hey, we'd love to make you a yellow jumpsuit. So I may rock a yellow jumpsuit at some point. Very soon. Yeah. I can't wait yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to test out the candy corn. Okay. As our yeah. last hurrah here. This would be Kimberly Brown would approve. She would be. All about this. She would be doing that right with you. And I feel like this could probably go with either the... Okay, I'm going to try one because I just want to see if they're just as terrible as they always were. Mm -hmm. Um, No, they're not as terrible as they were. See? It's the wine. They taste totally... <laughs> it's, it's so good. Everything's better with living. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Everything is better with living. It's a fun time. Um... They mm. taste different. Do they not That's have enough not what flavor? They look like uh, what they look like. That's not what they tasted like when I was growing up. <laughs> it's like what they look like. Probably because now, you know, they have a million. They had five ingredients before, and now they have thirty. Seventeen ingredients. ingredients. Oh, I bet seventeen. You'd be lucky if it was only seventeen. Mm. I love it. Well, I think it's okay. It's, 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 it's good. a lot of sweet. It's a lot of sweet. We're gonna be just buzzing. Mm -hmm. But I love just how balanced this is. I mean, it's yeah, just I really easy to like drink. This. Yeah. Is that, there's no added sugar, by the way. So There isn't? Nope. Is Libby just mail order? Is it? Can you go into a store and buy Libby, or do I? It is will it be. So it's coming soon. Okay. It's not yet released, but it will I be online. I have definitely ordered wines and subscriptions series, you know, and, um, and I've always leaned towards natural wines. Um, that don't have extra sugar in them. See? And I I can't wait to try the alcoholic ones. I mean, they're, well, they don't, they they had a low alcohol. That's what I love. So you don't want a high alcohol. Bring it out. Bring it back. Bring back yeah, the alcohol. Yeah, bring back the low alcohol. For Please, sure. For us. For us. But we love the good, the good non out. So great. This is this is perfect. Mm -hmm. This is just what we needed. And you absolutely match your your dress and your wine. So do you match the There you go. Uh, there see? We go. It's magic. There we go. See. We try to coordinate with our We do. with our beverages. <laughs> Well, this was so fun. I what do you have you. coming up? I know that you are going to be at the one-year anniversary of Oddity Improv. I am. That's next Monday yeah. in Franklin. That's going to be so much fun. Very, very fun. It yeah. really is. Um, I, I feel like I've missed so many fun things this You've year. You've been traveling a lot, though. I've been traveling a lot. I've been traveling a lot. Um, I have that coming up. I have... I feel like there's one other thing out there. Uh... uh you have so many. I bits. don't remember right now, um, but I I am already filling up my calendar for next year. Wow! For Comic Cons, I think I have like eight of them already set up for next year, starting in like mm. March. I'm very excited. One, uh, there's a lot of good ones, but one is '90s Con, and it's all '90s. Uh, see, I got it. I need to. That, I need to go. You should probably come with me. I should. Yeah, let's do it. It's Make it a girls' like trip. It. You would love it. I mean, it's all 90s, and it's just, you know. Well, that's my era. I know. You know? I know. I was trying to think. Oh, we were talking about par uh, Parent Trap earlier. Oh, yeah. That is, yeah. Yeah. The Well, the 60s one. You know what? I feel like a lot of people compare the 60s movie and totally then the. Totally different. They're totally different, and totally I love them different. for two di yeah. very different reasons. You know? I think, yeah. I loved both of them. 
I think that the second one I might have liked a little bit more just because I watched it with my daughter yeah. and she loved it. So the stuff you do with your kids. When I was in London, I had my friends drive me by the house that they really? filmed. Yeah. Was... So you've been not to New York, but you've been to London. <laughs> I've been everywhere. I've been like on you the have west. To go to New York. I know. Yeah. There's so that's my a, goal and for the next shopping year. In New York. So that might be a little dangerous for me. Oh, but there's some great. There's great bargain shopping. There's great like bargain I vintage. I, um, gosh, vintage is tough anymore. It's like the whole world has discovered vintage. If you want good vintage, oh, you know who has the best vintage? Who? Paris. Back Paris. to Europe. Back to Europe. Yeah, back there. Oh, crazy. Well, I have yeah. some shopping, some traveling to yeah. do. I love and it, it. It looks so good on you when you're wearing Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. So people can follow you, Judith Hogue Official. Judith Hogue Official on Instagram. Judith Hogue on Facebook. I don't really do the TikTok. Yeah. Um, I did, and I found that it was um, an, a time suck. An, an hour could go by, and you wouldn't even know it. Nope. And so I... At some point, I want to not be on social media at all. But at this point in my life, I don't see that happening imminently. But I'm picking my poison. Yeah. So those are probably the two places. You can find her there. Go to a Comic-Con. Yeah. Go to a Comic-Con. They're so much fun. Yeah. There. Yeah. The best. I well, know. So no, good maybe I'll have to come to 90s Con. <laughs> yes. I will, I will be there. I, that, that basically should just go since I... You should go and just yeah. interview everybody. That would be a good episode. That would be a great episode. Okay. Yeah. Goals for 2025. There you go. I love it. Well, congratulations. Thank, thank you, you so honey. much for being here. Well, I'll come to your rec room any old time. Oh, so honored. So blessed. And uh, thanks for being here. And make sure that you're subscribed to The Libby o Show on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the places. And all the places. We'll see you next time. And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. It's the Livio Show. It's the Livio Show.